This is a Subaru WRX STI Type RA, which is an incredibly stupid name for a very special car. Think of it like this. This is a regular STI with a few tweaks to make it the ultimate STI, and it's limited to just 500 units in the United States. Oh yeah, and it costs $50,000. That's right, while the regular WRX STI starts at $37,000, this one is 50 grand. Now that $50,000 sticker price makes this the most expensive Subaru ever. $13,000 over a regular STI may seem unthinkable unless it has a lot of upgrades over the regular STI, and this one doesn't, at least not on paper. It only has five more horsepower than the regular STI, bringing it up to 310, and it has the same 290 pound-feet of torque. It weighs 51 pounds less than the regular STI, but most of that weight reduction comes from removing Moving the spare tire, which you know you could just do in a regular STI for a lot less than 13 grand. But the Type RA is more than just 51 pounds and five horsepower. It's the STI turned up to its maximum potential that the factory could do and still offer a warranty. The fact that it's limited production is a pretty big deal too. These days, limited production cars are all the rage: the Shelby GT350R, the BMW 1M, the Porsche 911R, and so. Subaru figured they'd get in on the fun. So today I'm going to show you around the STI Type RA, and I'm going to show you all the things that make it different from a regular STI. Then I'm going to show you all of its quirks and features, and then I'm going to give it a Doug score. And for more of my thoughts on the STI Type RA, click the link below to visit autotrader.com slash oversteer, where I've also compiled a list of the most interesting and unusual Subaru models currently listed for sale on Autotrader. I'm going to start with the interesting quirks that distinguish the Type RA from the regular STI. There are actually quite a few of them if you know what to look for. And I say that because badging is not one of the things that distinguish this car. There is only one Type RA badge on the entire outside of this car. It's on the trunk and it's easy to miss. But there are a lot of other ways you can tell apart the Type RA. For instance, the regular STI has little silver badges on the front fenders that say STI. This one, those badges are black. A small but subtle difference. Same with the mirror caps. They are black on the Type RA. And it's the same with the roof-mounted antenna. It is also black instead of body color. It's an odd way to distinguish this car, but nonetheless, it does. Next, we move on to the brake calipers. Now, in the standard STI, the brake calipers are a very, very, very bright yellow. Whereas in this car, the brake calipers are instead silver, which gives it sort of a more muted look, actually, but frankly, one that I prefer. Another interesting way that Type RA is distinguished from the regular STI are these little red accents. If you look in front, you will see a little red accent along the grille, and if you look on the back bumper, you will see a red accent back here as well. This is a vinyl decal, actually. It doesn't paint like I assumed. You could just peel it off if you wanted, or you could put it on your regular STI and be a pretender. Now, the interesting thing is, back here, it isn't one piece of vinyl decal. If you look closely, you will see it's actually split into three sections because the decal has to go over this little bumper plug back here and so there's one piece here there's another tiny one and then there's another one that runs the length of the bumper now the window sticker refers to this as cherry blossom red accents which I think is kind of a stupid thing why do they have to name the color of the accents but nonetheless they have Next up, there are a couple of interesting cosmetic touches on the inside that distinguish the Type RA from the regular STI, starting with this steering wheel, which is finished in this nice fuzzy suede material. It's very, very nice to touch. Other quirks are a little bit more unusual. One is it has a little plaque right below the base of the shifter where it says STI Type RA, and then it shows which number Type RA you have. That's the only interior indication that you have a Type RA, just like that badge on the trunk is the only 
on the exterior indication. The other change they made to the interior, why they've replaced the start stop button with a red start stop button, just so you know you're in an especially sporty STI every time you push that button. But the changes between the Type RA and the regular STI aren't all cosmetic. There are actually quite a few other upgrades, one of which is right here, and that would be this carbon fiber roof. Not only does it save weight over the standard roof, but it lowers the center of gravity of the car because it's less weight high up, and so center of gravity is lower and the car can handle just a little bit better. And by the way, the carbon fiber roof is the reason they painted the antenna black. They wanted it to match the carbon fiber roof because they figured a blue antenna on the back would look weird on a black roof. Two other major weight savings changes are visible back here, one of which is these wheels. First off, you can see that they're gold, which is also another Type RA characteristic over the regular STI, but they're also these BBS wheels, which are a little bit lighter than the wheels in the standard model. Additionally, you have the carbon fiber spoiler back here, which saves a little weight, and that too is unique to the Type RA. The regular STI just has a normal non-carbon fiber spoiler. And with that, I've mentioned all the ways this car has saved weight compared to the standard STI, the carbon roof, the wheels, the carbon spoiler. I mentioned removing the spare tire kit before, but there's also one more weight savings technique this car had used, and that's back here. They have deleted the rear armrest, thus saving approximately two ounces in the process. If you ever have passengers riding in your Type RA and they go to pull down the armrest, you have to tell them, sorry, no comfort here. It's a weight savings thing. But the changes over the standard STI aren't only limited to weight savings. There are also several other revisions, one of which you can see back here is the rear bumper. The STI Type RA gets its own rear bumper with these distinctive holes in them. Subaru says they are functional holes. They allow air to pass through and they reduce drag and lift to allow you to go faster. And it's the same story up front. The Type RA has its own unique front splitter on the front bumper, which Subaru says helps to increase downforce to help you go around corners just a little bit quicker than a regular STI. Also cool, if you zoom way in on that front splitter and you look very closely at it, you can see there's a tiny little STI badge just sitting there. Most people won't notice it, but now you will. Other mechanical changes are a little bit more difficult to show you, but I can tell you about them. One is that this car has strengthened pistons in the engine compared to the standard STI. There are also a few other improvements. There is a retuned ECU, a slightly larger intake, and a slightly less restrictive exhaust. I say slightly because the sum total of those things is only five additional horsepower, according to Subaru, but nonetheless, they're on it, and they do provide that little extra kick. Also worth noting this car has improved suspension over the regular STI. It's just a little bit sportier and the shifter is revised. It's shorter throws. Subaru says 10% shorter throws and they've revised third gear for more of an optimal gear shifting setup. It's designed to help you out when you take this thing to the racetrack. But anyway, enough with the differences between the STI and the Type R. Let's move on to some of this car's interesting quirks, starting with this label. You see this label here, it says on it, please refer to your owner's manual for special cleaning and maintenance instructions on the following items. Ultra suede steering wheel, carbon rear wing, carbon fiber roof. Now, the interesting thing about that is only the Type RA actually has those items, which means only the Type RA gets this special little label. The regular STI doesn't have it. Also interesting, this is the Type RA owner's supplement with a few key Type RA details. The the interesting thing about this supplement, if you turn over on the back, it says, retailer note, rear wing and STI front under spoiler are shipped separately and are intended for retailer installation prior to sale. In other words, when this car shows up at the dealer off the transport truck from the port, from the boat, from the factory, it doesn't have the rear wing and the little front splitter installed in it. The dealer puts those on. So theoretically, you could get an STI Type RA without those items if you get one before the dealer has has added them. And another interesting thing, this is the window sticker for the Type RA, and you can see the sticker price is $50,361. Like I said, over 50 grand for an STI. The most interesting thing about the window sticker, though, is that it's not really for an STI Type RA. It says Type RA on the top, but you can see it's just a standard STI window sticker with an added option package 04 for $12,900. That is the Type RA option package. 
range. Basically, that means that the Type RA, at least in terms of Subaru's production and the window sticker, is really just an option package on a standard STI. Next, we move on to the interior of the Type RA. One of the most unusual features I've ever seen in any automotive infotainment system, and that would be the birthday feature. Take a look at this. If you go into the top screen, there are two screens in this car, the upper screen gives you the opportunity to set a birthday or an anniversary or some other special occasion. You can see I'm setting mine right now for today. And if you go in, you can even set what it's called. I've decided to name my special birthday, Doug. So then you've stored your birthday or your anniversary or your kids' birthdays or whatever, and the car remembers it. And then every single time you start your STI on your birthday or whatever days you've programmed, it wishes you a happy birthday or a happy anniversary. It pops up and there's like a present there with a bow and it's hilarious. It's like getting a little birthday card from Subaru every time you climb into your car on your birthday. That screen also has a couple of other interesting items, one of which is it shows exactly what percentage incline you're on, which is something I'm used to seeing in off-roader SUVs, but it has it as well. Also interesting is the configurability for the automatic headlights. You can choose between four different levels of sensitivity, low, medium, high, and max, and that way you can choose how responsive your automatic headlights are to darkness. If you're one of these people who gets angry that your headlights come on whenever you go in a tunnel and you only want them to come on at night, you can turn them to low and then they won't come on quite so quickly. Next we move on to another interesting configurability item and that would be gauge initial movement. Basically what this means is when you turn on the car, the gauges max out temporarily and then they go back to zero. Virtually all cars now do this. Automakers think it's cool, people think it's cool. In this car, you can turn it off if you don't like it. It is so odd to see that a configurable item. Most people never even notice that their car does it in the first place. This this car gives you the option of whether you want it on or off. Other interesting configurability items, one is you can set a rev buzzer, which is sort of a little tone that sounds if you hit a certain RPM. Maybe you're in the break-in period, you don't want to go past 5,000 RPM, so you stick a buzzer there to let you know you've hit it so you can upshift. You can also set a rev indicator light, basically a shift light to come on and blink when you've hit a certain RPM. The cool thing about this is you can dial in exactly what RPM you want, and I mean exactly. You can not only choose 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 RPM, but you can even choose the hundreds digit. So if you want your shift indicator light to turn on at 6,200 and not 6,100, you can do that. Next, I must cover the drive modes. There are three specifically, and they're named strangely. It isn't just comfort, normal, sport. Instead, you have intelligent. That's the base one, and that basically means intelligent as in economical. That's where the upshift light will come on. Then you can put it in sport, which is fairly normal sport. And then the top drive mode is called Sport Sharp. It's like a little sharper than sport. And its logo is the pound sign, or as the kids call it, the hashtag sign. Those are your three options. The strange thing about them is when you switch between them, you get this little graph in the gauge cluster, but you also get this very unusual noise. Take a listen. Also unusual, over to the left of the steering wheel, you have the ability to turn off the traction control. That is not all that uncommon, but there are two modes in this car. If you just tap traction control, it goes into track mode. That's indicated in the gauge cluster by saying track mode, T-R-A-C period mode. It's like an abbreviation for the word track by just removing the letter K, or maybe it's an abbreviation for traction. But either way, that's sort of a partial off of the traction control that lets you have a little bit more fun. If you hold down the traction control button, it completely shuts off traction control, and then you are all on your own. Next up, we must move on to the infotainment system in this car, which is actually rather basic. In fact, this car doesn't even have a navigation system, which is really impressive. There are not a lot of $50,000 cars out there without nav. Then again, adding nav would add weight maybe, and so we don't want that. It does, however, have a couple of other things that you wouldn't expect to see in a car that doesn't have navigation. For example, the sports. Why don't I just say the sports, like an old person? Anyway, yes, you can check sports in your STI, and it's weirdly comprehensive. Go into baseball and you can pick a league, and then you can pick a division and get scores. The weird thing is, check this out, I go into motorsports and I have two options, NASCAR and Indy, except, uh, 
I can't actually select Indy. So uh, I guess we'll get some NASCAR results. It also can look up stocks for you. You go into the stocks tab, you type in the stock symbol of the company you wanna look up, and then it looks up stock prices for you, which is unusual in a car like this. A couple of other interesting infotainment system quirks. One is that it allows you to customize the screen off image. What this means is if you turn off the infotainment screen, you can have your own personal picture displaying, like if you want a picture of your kids there. The other interesting item in the infotainment system is it gives you the ability to adjust the colors of the screen. That's not all that unusual. The strange thing in this one is it gives you the ability to specifically adjust the colors in the camera. The backup camera screen so if you want a little bit more green in your backup camera you can do that for some reason or if you want a little bit more red you can do that I'm not really sure why maybe for sunglasses polarity or people who are colorblind but either way that's something odd that I've never really seen before you can throw your backup camera colors out of whack now beyond those three screens the rest of the interior there really aren't that many quirks at the end of the day this is a Subaru and Subaru has sort of based their entire modern company on simplicity and durability and ease of use and everything else in this car is just frankly pretty simple and pretty Subaru. I will note however that the handle to release the fuel door is unusually large in the driver's footwell but that's just about the only other quirk I could find outside the screens in the front. There are however a couple of interesting items worth noting in the back one of which is the fact that the rear seats have this same microfiber and suede with red accents as the front seats which is kind of cool because not that many people will ride in the back of an STI probably. And yet Subaru still went to the trouble of putting in these nice feeling, nice looking, presumably rather expensive seats in the back of this car. And speaking of the seats, there is one unusual quirk back here. You will notice that there are red seat belts in front. There are also red seat belts in back, except the middle seat has a black seat belt. So if you get an STI Type RA, you get four red seat belts and one black seat belt. One interesting item I found in the back of this particular Type RA is there's a blanket back here. It's a Subaru blanket that has been delivered with this particular car. So if you want to, you can sort of unfurl your Subaru blanket and take a nap in the back of the STI while your driver is out carving canyons or racing on the track. Hmm. Now, next up, we move on to the owner's manual. Now, I didn't really have a chance to go through the entire owner's manual, largely because it is absolutely massive. But I did find on page 13-10, there is a little warning that says, Caution, your vehicle is neither designed nor intended to be used for trailer towing. Therefore, never tow a trailer with your vehicle. Seems reasonable. Then if you turn the page to 13-12, it says, Caution, your vehicle is neither designed nor intended to be used for trailer towing. Therefore, never tow a trailer with vehicle. And then on page 13-13, the very next page, it says, Caution, your vehicle is neither designed nor intended for trailer towing, never tow a trailer to the vehicle. Okay, we get it. We're not supposed to tow a trailer with our STI, or at least that's what I would think if it didn't show a picture right after that warning label of a car towing a trailer. In fact, it shows that picture right after the next warning label as well. It's like if you tell your dog he can't have any of your steak, but then you leave the steak right there on the edge of the table. The dog's gonna eat the steak. And folks, Subaru is just tempting us by showing Showing us how cool it would be to tow with our STI. Now the other interesting thing in the trunk here, like I mentioned, they've removed the spare tire in the pursuit of weight savings. Now I know what you're thinking, if you get a Type RA, you're getting screwed because Subaru has stolen your spare tire, but never fear, they have made up for it. The tire inflator kit, the zipper is blue to match the blueness of the car. They give you a cool tire inflator kit zipper. That's basically the same thing. The other interesting item with the owner's manual is on those pages with the trailer towing info it gives you all these equations for how to calculate how many pounds the car can handle before it has exceeded its load capacity and look at all these equations it's sort of giving you examples for how many people and luggage you can fit in the car no one is ever going to actually use these equations but they're here next up we're going back under the hood and here's what an unmodified type ra engine looks like take a close look 
because I strongly suspect this is the only one of these you're ever going to see unmodified. In fact, I strongly suspect this one will be modified before this video is even live, but it isn't now. And so this is what it looks like. The most interesting thing under here I find is there's no plastic cover over this engine like in every single other car. This is like the old school engine. I guess Subaru's theory is this car is bought by people who want to work on it themselves and who want to modify it. And so there's no point sticking that cover over there because they're just going to pull it off anyway. And so that's a tour of the most expensive Subaru ever. Now it's time to get behind the wheel and drive it. All right, driving the Type RA. Man, the shifter is very short. They say the throws are only 10% shorter, but it's pretty tight. I am really surprised at how quick it feels when you just sort of tap the throttle. Um, I'm also surprised though, it just doesn't have that much sound. There's not that much noise to it. It just doesn't have the sort of the sound that a lot of performance cars do. Now, obviously what everybody does is they just get an exhaust and they solve that problem. But I'm surprised that sort of the optimal level of the optimal level, I mean, this is Impreza, then the WX, then the STI, then the Type RA. You'd think they would be like, all right, let's just throw a big exhaust on this thing already because we know people are going to do that. It's impressive how precise it is. I think that's the really incredible thing. I turn a little bit and the car just zips, which isn't unusual for a sports car, but for a sedan. Whew. It, the steering is so good. Man. Whew. It's really surprisingly quick, but like all turbocharged cars, and especially like four-cylinder turbocharged cars, you do have to get a little bit into the rev range for it to start to move. Um, at about 2,500 RPM, it really starts to become like a thing, and you really get going. The gears are really short. I'm not even flooring it, and I'm already, it's like time for the next gear, time for the next gear, time for the next gear continuously. Um, the gears are really short for, you know, optimal acceleration. I'm really surprised at how sharp the handling feels. It's just, this car has no body roll and it changes direction instantly, even mid-corner. Just a little bit of steering input and it's just immediately going the other way. It's incredible how tight it is. Man. <laughs> it's like a little sports car. It's like you're throwing around like a little convertible sports car, like a Miata or something like that. It really handles on the level of that, which is incredible because you got four doors. You got a whole other group of seats back there. It does have explosive power. It really does feel very fast when you get to the, the right point in the rev range. If you're at 3,000, 3,500, I mean, it really kicks you back uh, more than you probably would expect, certainly more than I would have expected. Man, I'm just so impressed by how well it corners. It's really good. I really haven't driven an STI in ages, and it's quite impressive. It's impressive especially because when I, you know, 15 years ago when this car came out, it was 300 horsepower and all-wheel drive and six speed. And now it's 300 horsepower all-wheel drive and six speed, but it's so much sharper and tighter. It is really good. It's a, it's like a totally, it's an awesome like complete package. And you got four seats, which is nice because this is a sports car. This has the driving experience and the driving feel of a sports car, but you get four doors, which is, that's a pretty cool setup. Um, there's not that many four-door cars that really feel like that until you go deep into the M5, the M3 even, but those that's, that's huge money. And so that's the STI Type RA. Some people will scoff at paying 50 grand for an STI, but the STI is famous for holding its value well. And I could see the Type RA with its limited production and its extra factory goodies and its tuner tweaks directly from Subaru holding its value best. If not now, then in 40 years when the Japanese car revolution is alive and well at Barrett Jack. Regardless of all that money stuff though, it's a hoot to drive, and now it's time to give it a Doug score. Starting with the weekend categories and styling, the Type RA is decent looking, but it's not exactly beautiful, more functional, and the wing is kind of ridiculous, it gets a 6 out of 10. Acceleration is good, the turbocharged engine makes it fun, but it needs to be faster, it does 0-60 to 60 in 5.6 seconds, and that gives it only a 4 out of 10. Handling is excellent, and it gets a 7 out of 10, that's the same score as the Porsche 997 Turbo, and it's just that good, it really blew me away. Fun Factor is strong, and it gets a 7 out of 10. Cool Factor is good, but to most people it's just an STI, and really it is 
is just an STI. It's not wildly rare, and it gets a 6 out of 10 for a total weekend score of 30 out of 50. As for the daily categories, features are fine, nothing special, and it gets a 6 out of 10. Comfort is fine too, and it gets a 6 out of 10. Quality is good, I suspect the car will be reliable, but the interior is pretty average, and it gets a 6 out of 10. Practicality is average for the class, and it gets a 5 out of 10. Finally, there's value. The Type RA is a lot of fun, but it's overpriced at $50,000 without more changes over the regular STI. Still, it would probably retain its value well, like all STIs, and it gets a 5 out of 10 for a total daily score of 28 out of 50. Add it up, and the Doug score is 58 out of 100, which places it below the Focus RS and the Civic Type R, which I wasn't too positive about. I think the STI is a better car than the Civic Type R, but the Type RA version specifically is a little too expensive. The regular model would probably get a 7 in value and beat out the Civic Type R overall. Either way, the STI beats out the Civic Type R in weekend categories. Even though it's slower, it handles better and it's much better looking, but the Focus RS beats them all. I guess next I'll have to test a Golf R.